Hast du etwas Zeit für mich? Dann singe ich ein Lied für dich. Halt dir. Halt dir. So last week we looked at German movies, German cinema. So I thought this week, why not look at German music? Mahlzeit, Richie here again. Welcome back. And as I said briefly in the introduction in this video, I want to look at German music, music in the German language by German artists, following on from our video about German cinema. Now this is going to be, I'm going to try and make this a little bit more scientific, less random than the cinema video, because it's German music from the point of view of an English speaker, a person who grew up in the UK, and maybe look at more at what crossed over into popular British and American culture uh, and not just stuff that's um, exclusive to Germany. So the, the few bands that really made it internationally from Germany, um, despite Germany not really having a reputation for being a big country for music, right? But I also want to look at my own tastes and tell you, to share with you a few of my favourite German bands and artists. And I've got a confession to make, first of all, there are a couple of important bands that I'm not really a fan of that are still worthy of a mention, bands or artists rather. And the first one I have to say is, as a Bochumer Junge, I really shouldn't admit this, but I'm not really a big fan of Herbert Grönemeyer. Yes. I do know the words to Bochum off by heart. I've sang them uh, regularly and I do own the album, the Bochum album 4630, the um, famous one with Bochum on there and the uh, Mann ist ein Mann, ein Mann, uh, etc. But you know, I've never, I've always appreciated the importance of Herbert Grunemeyer um, on the his influence on the German pop music scene, his talent, um, and also his his lyrics are, are often quite thoughtful. But it's just, you know, not really my cup of tea. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I still love you, I still love you. You will no doubt let me know in the comments whether you share my opinion of Herbert Grunemeyer or not. Let me know if you're a big fan. The other artist stroke band that isn't really my cup of tea, but are definitely worthy of a mention here. You certainly cannot talk about German music and the international impact of German music and in artists that have had an international impact on the music scene without mentioning, of course, Rammstein. It seems if you talk to an American music fan and you say you're from Germany, the, the immediate response is, hey bro, you're from Germany? Do you know Rammstein? And yes, of course, everybody knows Rammstein, and Rammstein is a very important band, I think. I, will, I imagine that going to see one of their live shows, I think they're very well known for putting on a massive show, big budget shows, and lots of theatre, lots of, lots of fireworks, lots of lights, and I imagine they put on a really good show. I, I, I really do enjoy live music and I appreciate a proper show. So I imagine I'd have a great experience if I went to see them. But do I listen to Rammstein at home on my own? Not really. Es wenn die Wolken schlafen gehen, kann man meinen Himmel sehen. Now sticking with the idea of bands and artists that made it beyond the borders of Germany and me being a child of the 80s, having grown up in the 80s in the UK, one of my earliest memories is being eight years old and coming home to tape the charts every Sunday on Radio 1, BBC Radio 1 in the UK. We would listen to the charts, the new charts would be announced and I remember putting in a cassette to record the number one spot that, that, that week and was of course Nina. Nina, a girl from just down the road here in Hagen who made it big and had a number one hit in the UK with the translated version of her song 99 Luftballons, which was in English of course 99 Red Balloons. Hast du etwas Zeit für mich? Dann singe ich ein Lied für dich. That extra syllable they had to get a colour, the Luftballons in German just being balloons, so they had to make them red. In the UK, of course, Nina would, or Nina as people called her over there, would pretty much re um, remain a one-hit wonder. We only really knew 99 Red Balloons and then she kind of disappeared, so I didn't really 
get into all the rest of the of Nina's stuff. Didn't really get to know all her hits like Leuchtturm, irgendwie, irgendwo, irgendwann, until um, I moved over here permanently in 1999. These songs are, of course, absolute standards. If you go to any Abbey theatre anywhere between the Schlager songs, you're going to hear all these Nina songs. And she has some really, really catchy tunes. What you don't realise as uh, an English person um, who didn't really live in the in Germany throughout the 80s and 90s is that she remained really pro prolific um, regular albums all through the 80s and 90s and then into the 2000s I remember after I'd moved out here she released um, I think around 2003 she released uh, like a an anniversary album doing some of her older hits and that was quite a big big success she, obviously another version of 99 Luftballons um, in the in wo in van um, came out in Leuchtturm. That was a really good um, new version. It gave people like me, a new generation, a chance to get to know all of her older hits. Of course, if you talk to people of my generation from the UK, if you say to them German music, there's one name that's going to drop after maybe saying Nina and 99 Red Balloons, 99 Luftballons, they will probably say immediately Kraftwerk or rather Kraftwerk as the English tend to pronounce it. They're definitely the band that most people of my generation that grew up in the 80s will think of, largely because of the hit 1982 number one hit, also number one hit in the UK, The Model, and that's Model. Uh, but of course, um, by then they were doing things in two languages. They said really I'd broken it into the um, international market. They're well most known uh, for their pioneer work with electronic music so really from 1974 onwards the 1974 album Autobahn and then of course uh, when it comes to uh, international relevance we're talking about uh, the album they also Trans Europa Express or Trans Europe Express that was when did that come out that was I can't remember the year but yeah, no doubt you can tell me down below in the comments um, but by then they were releasing two versions of the albums one in German one in one in English and of course uh, the Mensch Maschine the Man Machine which came out in 1982 with the model and then they were established, established on the international scene and well known to this day as the electronic band really purely electronic band but it's um interesting I would look back in time um, I see their roots as very much in the kraut rock scene there's a really interesting video here on YouTube I'll, I'll link it up here somewhere you can see um, an old rock palast episode a whole live performance by Kraftwerk in Zorst in 1970 where they're still playing they're using synthesizers they're experimenting with the electronic music so there's signs of what is to come but there's a traditional um, drum uh, drum set there it's not a drum machine or anything and you can hear very much the roots of their music the the origins of their music in the kind of prog ex, prog rock experimental rock of the late 60s um, early 70s and um, it's very much this kind of one chord drone type sound which is very common to um, what became known as Krautrock and of course there are links there to the bands such as uh, Neu, um, ex-members, members, um, brief members I think for only a brief time, Michael Rota and Klaus Dinger. Uh, Klaus Dinger played on the first Kraftwerk, Kraftwerk album from 19, uh, 1970 playing proper drums and Klaus Dinger it was who was very very uh, important to the to the forming of this um, crap rock sound, which I say is typified by one of my absolute favorite bands, Neu. Um, all this kind of um, Dusseldorf scene. Um, he, Klaus Dinger it was, he was a member together with Michael Rota from 1971 to 1975. Um, both of them, of course, obviously later played with Kraftwerk, but they're most known for, for Neu and the crap rock sound. It was Klaus Dinger, who would probably have considered himself primarily, primarily a guitarist back then, that played drums for Neu, and he was credited with um, inventing the motoric beats, the, the very simplified, repetitive drum beat that marked then the sound as a probably with playing within with his limitations as an actually in a guitarist, but playing the drums in the studio. Um, invented this very very simplistic uh, repetitive beat that was the trademark of all the Neu sounds and as I say everything on one chord which kind of 
carried on into the Kraftwerk uh, era. You can hear it on Kraftwerk, certainly the early albums. Most there's these very, very long songs that are all based on one chord, very droney, kind of like almost like a raga rock sound. You know the kind of thing. Kraftwerk songs all sound like this. And you can hear the origins there in all the noise songs that all pretty much sound like this. At this point I'd just like to take a quick break in the video and say thank you very much anyway for tuning in. If you are enjoying the video so far please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing if you have not done so and also at this point I would like to thank from the bottom of my heart all my patrons people who support me on patreon with a small donation every month that really helps me continue making these videos thank you very much if that's something that interests you the extra content that you can get there the exclusive content I do a Q&A every month for example and an extra bonus vlog some behind the scenes things answering all your questions that I get asked on here and I don't have time to answer on YouTube if that's something that interests you there's a link down below and otherwise let's carry on with the video in general when it comes to music and that applies also to German music of course I'm very much a fan of guitar based music very much um, independent alternative direction and I'm trying to think the German band that probably made the breakthrough into the mainstream more that's kind of from that independent alternative rock scene would maybe be Mia they're a band founded at school in 1997 the two members uh, Mietze Katz and Andy Ross uh, went to the same uh, gymnasium uh, grammar school in Berlin I really like their first couple of albums I, they've carried on throughout the the, the noughties and um, had quite a, a few albums but it's a, the first couple of albums that I have here uh, Heap und Stichfest um, notably uh, the single everyone knows Kreisel and of course this one Mein hungriges Herz durchfährt ein bitter süßes Schwert Sag mir wie weit, wie weit, wie weit, wie weit willst du gehen Hungriges Herz of course there's a terrible verse later on where she tries to sing that in French and in English and it doesn't really quite work I particularly appreciate a band when they do actually sing in German because they sing in German and I think that was a bit of a bad idea to actually break into a bit of French and English. It doesn't sound that good. Moving on then and to another band that uh, also from the 90s the noughties that I got really into. One of the few bands that I got into when I came out from my year out. I was here from um, the autumn of 94 to 95 and one band that I got to know us about it was Bloomfeld, a band that I still like very much to this day. I went back to the UK with the, both their first albums, Ich Maschine and L'Etat et Moi. They're a band from Hamburg originally. They were active from 1990 to 2007 when they finally split up. And they're important to me because it was one of the first bands that I really, really got into in German language from back in the early 90s. And also because when I moved out here in 1999 to Germany permanently, it was the first the first record that I bought, a CD in fact, was their um, album Old Nobody that came out in the same year. So it was um, important and I really like them. I've, um, not Obviously I can't play anything for you, but if you um, don't know them, check them out. Search for them here on YouTube and uh, this is one of the few bands I'm not going to actually play something of theirs for you. So check them out, go and Google them. Moving up to the present day then and I'm trying to think of the bands that are still around now, the bands that I've seen most recently and two names stick out. Um, one band, uh, Gur, they are a duo from Berlin, another band from Berlin, an uh, all-female duo founded in 2012. They didn't make their first album until 2016. And I think I got into these again, ironically living here through the English, the UK link, because a friend of mine um, got into them. They've kind of semi-broken through into the, the English scene, the UK scene. They do some of their songs in English and in German. And a good friend of mine, uh, mentioned them. I don't know, we were talking some time and he mentioned that he liked them and I'd um, heard a couple of things as well. It's very much kind of um, indie grunge, kind of garage uh, rock. Really basic but really good, uh, good honest um, indie music. And after talking to this friend of mine we used it as an excuse. They were playing at uh, the Fall Festival 
um, a festival that's usually put on every year here in uh, Dusseldorf and um, we use it as an excuse for him to come over to visit us and we got tickets to go and see them. Again, check them out if you don't know them and you get into that kind of garagey indie sound, guitar sound, uh, get a recommendation from me. And another band that we encountered actually by going to the Fall Festival, there were, there were three bands on the actual bill. We just got tickets to go and see Gur because that's one the band we knew and there were two of the bands on the bill and one that really grabbed our attention was Isolation Berlin and I've been a fan ever since. And it's very interesting because I'm not really normally a fan of lyrics. I, I can quite happily listen to a song and not listen to the words at all. I can switch off. I'm very much, um, if I want words, I'll read a book. Um, and if I'm listening to music, I'm quite happy to just listen to the music and the melody. It doesn't really matter, matter too much what they're saying. So it's unusual when a band comes along and I really do enjoy the lyrics. And that's a big point, big thing about Isolation Berlin. One particular uh, song, I just there's just something witty about it. They talk of everyday things. Another uh, Berlin band, quite seems to be quite a lot of songs of theirs about talking about um, riding the S-Bahn on public transport on a grey day in Berlin and listing um, areas of Be Berlin. But um, there was one particular song, Serotonin. Wenn du mich suchst, dann findest du mich am Pfandflaschenautomat. Da hol ich mir zurück, was mir gehört. Um, just the the introduction, the first few lines of it uh, just really strike me as being, I don't know, somehow really funny. Just quite often melancholy tales of everyday life and with a bit of a, a, a wry smile. I like that. Again, check them out. Don't just listen to my uh, bad 10 second cover versions of their stuff, go and check them out. As ever, of course, feel free to comment down below, give me your recommendations, what do you think I would like, what's your favourite German artist, musical artist, what are your favourite German bands and songs. Um, of course, we're talking about pop and rock music, so I know Beethoven was quite um, popular and there's this guy in Austria, Mozart and, and stuff like that, you know, Bach, I know, I know. And of course, thank you very much for watching. It wasn't by any means a comprehensive video. It was kind of my impressions and my taste once again. I hope it was interesting though. There's the idea of German music from a British perspective, my unique kind of half German, half British perspective as ever. Thank you very much for watching. As I say, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. It would help me greatly and leave me a thumbs up, give me a like. And if you're interested, check out the Patreon link. You can get some exclusive content there. As I say, in the description, there is a link to Patreon. Otherwise, I will see you here in the next video. Thank you very much once again. Macht's gut, Leute.